I recently ran across a study in my readings on low carb diets that went into quite some detail on supplementation on omega-3 fats. You know, the stuff that people supplement with like fish oil and krill oil. Although the study was on the ketogenic diet and its role in reducing seizures in people that are prone, and yes, I'll be covering it soon, so stay tuned for that, uh, the study did also have an involved discussion section discussing the literature on omega-3 fats and their effects on the brain overall. So I thought to myself, maybe you'd want to hear what the researchers have to say. Learn your body, a science-based education. You might know this already, but omega-3s are unsaturated fats, much like omega-6s are unsaturated fats. But their chemical structure, though both are fats, is slightly different. I won't go into the chemistry of degrees of unsaturation and bond angle and all that jazz because, well, it's not important here. Just know that omega-3s and omega-6s are unsaturated fats and that they have slightly different chemical structures. Now, why does that matter? Well, your brain cells, of which there are the most common, the neurons, and the less common, macroglia and microglia, have a cell membrane that is made up of two layers, hence the name bilayer. Now, that bilayer is made up of different molecules, like proteins and cholesterol and fats and even carbohydrates. You can imagine that the cell has to construct that protective vital bilayer out of the materials it is supplied with. So if you consume less of a particular molecule, your cells use other molecules as best they can to create the structure of your membrane. Now, I mentioned that fats are part of that bilayer and omegas are fats. So let's put those two together. It seems that the exposure to these unsaturated fats leads to changes in the structure of that bilayer. The cells of the brain begin to reorganize their membranes, which changes the fluidity of the cell membrane to undergo synaptic rearrangement. That means the connections between neurons, as well as with other cells, are changed, or at least have the potential to change according to stimuli. Essentially, the types of fats available to your cells allows you, theoretically, to have a healthier, better functioning brain for the aforementioned reason. On top of that, certain fats are more prone to being damaged over time by unwanted oxidation. I won't go into that here, but generally that means damage to the chemical structure of the fat molecule thereby making the cell membrane less functional relative to the healthy fat molecule in its place. Omega-6s are more prone to oxidation or damage when compared to omega-3s. This confers a benefit to omega-3s. This has apparently been shown and if cells are exposed to omega-3 fats, they tend to have a more stable membrane, reducing the chances of unwanted brain activity and increased health of the brain. Now, you may be thinking, great, then I'll just supplement with omega-3s. And while I wouldn't caution you against that, we do need to further understand the context. The rate at which omega-3s are incorporated into the brain takes years, not days, so if you begin supplementation, it would be wise to at least continue for at least six months to notice a change. Although blood levels of omega-3s may increase quickly, the turnover and incorporation into the brain is quite slow, as omega-3s are slowly replaced in the brain cell's membranes. Certainly there's much more that could be said on the topic, but I thought this is a great introduction on how omega-3s affect our brain, and certainly something we'll explore with actual data to back up these claims and other points in the future. But let's leave it here. So thanks for allowing me a slice of your time and attention, and consider sharing if you found it informative, and I'll speak to you next time. Bye.